Trump corporations, Trump corporations, casinos and hotels, have declared bankruptcy four times over the last quarter century. In 2011, you told Forbes magazine this, I've used the laws of the country to my advantage. But at the same time, financial experts involved in those bankruptcies say that lenders to your companies lost billions of dollars. Question, sir, with that record, why should we trust you to run the nation's business? Because I have used the laws of this country just like the greatest people that you read about every day in business have used the laws of this country, the chapter laws, to do a great job for my company, for myself, for my employees, for my family, etc. You've also supported a host of other liberal policies. You've also donated to several de Democratic candidates, Hillary Clinton included, Nancy Pelosi. You explained away those donations saying you did that to get business-related favors. And you said recently, quote, when you give, they do whatever the hell you want them to do. You better believe it. So what specifically did they do? If I ask them, if I need them, you know, most of the people on this stage I've given to, just so you understand, a lot of money. Not me. I no, give I to many people. Before this, before two months ago, I was a businessman. I give to everybody. When they call, I give. And you know what? When I need something from them, two years later, three years later, I call them. They are there for me. So and that's get? a broken system. So what'd you get from Hillary Clinton and Nancy Pelosi? Well, I'll tell you what. With Hillary Clinton, I said, be at my wedding, and she came to my wedding. You've called women you don't like fat pigs, dogs, slobs, and disgusting animals. Your Twitter account Only is Rosie several... O'Donnell. No, it wasn't. Your Twitter account... Thank you. For the record, it was well beyond Rosie O'Donnell. Yes, I'm sure it was. Your Twitter account has several disparaging comments about women's looks. You once told a contestant on Celebrity Apprentice it would be a pretty picture to see her on her knees. Does that sound to you like the temperament of a man we should elect as president? And how will you answer the charge from Hillary Clinton, who is likely to be the Democratic nominee, that you are part of the war on women? I think the big problem this country has is being politically correct. And everybody tells me I won the debate. They did polls of the debate itself, and I was in the 60s and 70 percentages, and I think that I won the debate. I, I love doing it in a certain way. Uh, I will say this for the last time. I don't think I was treated fairly, but these are minor details. Uh, and uh, I really had a good time doing it. It was very interesting. I've never done a debate before like that. My life has been a debate, but I've never done officially a debate. And it was really great. I got to know the candidates. And I got to like some of them a lot. I think they're terrific people and others probably not as much, but that's the way life well, goes. Well, I think I'll do more for women. I cherish women. I think I'll do more for women than Hillary can ever do. I think that I will take care. You know, I thought Jeb Bush made a horrible mistake when he blew the whole situation on, on women's health, you know, the women's health okay. issue. A week ago, what he said was just unbelievable. Essentially, he's saying, I'm not going to fund it. And I think that will go down as Jeb Bush's 47 percent. The 47 percent to Romney were probably cost him the election when he said that. He didn't know he was saying it, and it was a mistake, and it was too bad. But that probably cost him the election. I think Jeb's statement on women's health from a few days ago will go down as his 47 percent. I don't think you can recover from a statement. Then he goes back and he says he misspoke. That's the kind of thinking, whether it's good or bad or whatever it is, but that's the kind of thinking that the country needs. We owe $19 trillion, going up rapidly. We have a country that's in collapse. We're going to have a problem like you've never seen. Once we get over that $21, $22 trillion mark, we're going to have a problem. And I'm really good at that stuff. And I know my competition, and they're not good at it. They don't, they don't, they wouldn't have now, a clue. Let me, let me put it differently, and I discussed this with you before. I say, absolutely. I'm a businessman. Republican, I'm a conservative, but I'm a businessman. Let's say I say, no, I'm not going to give you anything. Congratulations, you're doing a wonderful job. The answer is no. And the nice part about me, I don't want anybody's money. You have $345 million in liquid assets. Are you prepared to spend that much money sure. or more? Well, you saw my income. My income's $400 million a year. But are you prepared to spend it? Sure, I would spend it, if I'm doing well. Yeah. Donald Trump saying now he's open to accepting some donations, some big donations. 
as long as contributors don't have any strings attached. You heard him just talking about that. He was responding to a question about whether he can continue funding his own campaign through the general election. I think election. it's a bad move for him <laughs> to take big money. He has attacked it for the reasons it should be attacked. For him to say now, well, with no strings attached, that's not genuine. Why doesn't he ask the millions of people, hundreds of thousands who are supporting him, to put up $50 or $100? That'll get him several hundred million dollars. Yep. Let mm -hmm. people finance his campaign if he wants to let people invest, but put a limit on it. He shouldn't allow big money in here. It's what makes him different, and it's been a very important element of his uh, of his argument of being an so outsider. First, over the weekend, Donald Trump descended on the Iowa State Fair, where he attracted huge crowds, answered dozens of questions from the press, and even gave free rides to kids in his helicopter. And on Saturday, Trump held a press conference in Iowa, where, per usual, he delivered some pretty candid remarks. Watch this. We're going to take jobs back from China, Japan. We're going to make our country great again. And that, to me, is going to be the challenge. And we're going to do it. And it's not going to be that difficult. When I get the right people negotiating with the right countries, we will come out on top every single time. When I do a deal, I don't say, oh, here's 14 points. For I go out and do it. I don't sit down and talk about 14 points. She just asked, Casey, she just asked, am I going to take questions from reporters? What am I doing? Am I taking questions from report? They'll tell you I'm taking questions. By the way, unlike Hillary, unlike Hillary, this is unlike Hillary. Do we agree? I am really trying to understand um, how conservatives um, can look at Donald Trump's record, um, which he himself self-identifies more as a Democrat than as a, cons than as a conservative or a Republican, um, and say, that's our guy. Now, I want the American people to decide, and I'm not trying to shut him down. I, do, I don't agree with people who want to, you know, kick him out or silence him or whatever. Um, uh, I just don't understand it. When people are illegally in the country, they have to go. Now, the good ones, and there are plenty of good ones, will work it so it's expedited. We can expedite it where they come back in, but they come back legally. Bill, we have a country. You need borders and you need I, law. Uh, I we said that no for law. decades I've been saying that, but you are not going to be able to deport people who have American citizenship now, and the federal courts will never allow mass deportation without due process for each and every one. And do you envision federal police kicking in the doors in, in barrios around the country, dragging families out and putting them on a bus? Let me start first with the wall. He says he's going to build a wall and he's going to get Mexico to pay for it. Is that possible? Heck yeah, it's possible. And his, his immigration policy and, and these common sense plans of his that uh, most Americans, I, I believe, have been thinking, just not being able to say because we don't have a microphone like he does. Uh, the immigration plan of his, especially the wall, that's common sense. It's a real shot in the arm to constitutionalists and conservatives who want America to be put first by our leaders. And really, it's a shot across the bow to the other candidates because now they're going to have to explain why can't build a wall even though we've been saying it for years there in the political classes in, in DC we've been promising people a wall now they're gonna have to explain to people why they don't support the policies that mr. Trump has come out with and the argument about it's for the children will be used over and over again to kind of portray probably all Republicans as being heartless and nothing could be further from the truth you know a plank in our platform is pro-family and a family is a unit and I believe what mr. Trump and probably the other Republican candidates once they do come out with um, some kind of policy proposals what they're saying is yeah a family is a unit and if their parents broke the law and if they're here illegally well they need to get back in line and because family is a unit Greta the family sticks together and the kids have to get in line with their mom and dad always making speeches I then because we have to make our country great again right I love the vets we have a lot of vets here tonight. In leadership, I win like forget it. Not even a contest. So much higher than everybody else, like two or three. I don't know. You got all these cameras going. They can tell you. And we're going to do question and answer. And you can make them vicious, violent, horrible questions, even though you're sort of probably on live television. How many cameras are lit? Yeah, there's a lot of them. 
Every time I speak now, it's on live television. You know why? It's a very simple business, ratings. The other thing I want to just dwell on for two seconds, and we probably, you've heard, but we are going to build a wall at the border. We're going to build a wall. I'm going to make this wall so beautiful, because when I'm gone, they're going to probably change the name to the Trump wall. I've got to make it beautiful. The thing that made me most upset, and everybody else too, was the three hours. Because to be standing up for three hours, asked, answering questions in the form of a debate, and I think the viewers probably, you know, frankly, I think they would have done as well as they've done. You know, I think they set a record in the history of CNN. As well as they've done, they would have done better if it was an hour shorter. It was too much, it was too long, and I would imagine at a certain point people get bored with that. But I like the way that, you know, certain things happened. I would say this, it was a little bit like WWE, the great Vince McMahon, who was a terrific guy, uh, the way, and, and every question had to do with me. It was, uh, Mr. Trump said this, Mr. Trump, <laughs> I think they said 46% of the questions had something like that. So I thought it was a little bit unusual. But if you watch the pundits, I mean, they all said I did fine, but they didn't say I won. So the people that vote, and maybe that's the important ones, but the people that vote said I won. And, you know, don't forget, again, I'm very much like Fox, I hate to bring this up, but I was asked probably the toughest questions because everything was about, like, Trump said this, Trump said that. And even when the question wasn't asked to me, they were saying, Trump said this, how would you respond? So I think probably by far I was asked the toughest questions. But the voters all said that I won by a lot. So we'll see. I guess in the end, it doesn't Actually, matter. Actually, Mike Huckabee, who's a terrific guy, said to me, I'm going to attack you because the only way I'm going to get some publicity out of this is to attack you. And he was kidding. He was just having fun. But he was having a hard time getting some airtime. He said, the only way I'm going to get airtime is to attack you. And uh, we laughed. But uh, there's a little truth to it, I guess. Although everybody that's attacked me, if you look at... Uh, Perry, and if you look at it, everybody, I mean, everybody so far that's attacked me has gone down. We'll see what happens. Hopefully that continues. In a country that is very armed, that somebody that will be carrying weapon will go to a mosque tomorrow or after tomorrow and will start shooting people. And then these people will have blood on their hands, all of them. We Carson, two points here. And one, we that certainly, I, I rejoining us now from New York City, Donald Trump. What do you, what do you say to that? If, you, if somebody shoots up a mosque, you're responsible. Well, I think it's terrible what's going on. I can tell you in New York City, they used to go in and check and do a lot of different things, and now they're not doing any checking. And I think, frankly, the question that was asked of me in New Hampshire, which was a packed house and a lot of enthusiasm, I just didn't want to respond to the question. It's the first time I've ever been sort of made controversial by not responding to a question. But they wanted me to defend President Obama, and he can defend himself. Okay. I don't have to defend Obama. Okay. All right. Am I fair to say that in order for you to win the Republican nomination, that you're going to have to change your style and be a bit kinder and more mature? Is that a fair question? Well, I think it's fair. I think the word mature is not appropriate, but I think it's certainly fair. I think that, you know, as you know, I'm leading every poll and most polls I'm leading very big in New Hampshire, in uh, Iowa. If you look at what just came down South Carolina, the polls all number one. So I can't be doing so badly, Bill, but it's not going to be a question of nice. I think I'm a nice person. I have great relationships. You know me well. I help people. I love but it's people. The clown stuff. That's not fine. Last question. Well, OK, you, I, I can understand. OK, that. good. You have the but he highest, hit me very viciously. But on policy, he, you have the highest unfavorables in the polls. All right, more people don't like you than any other candidate. Is it fair to ask you why you think that is? Well, I also have the highest positives in the poll. Yeah, That's why like I'm leading Howard every Cosell. poll. Remember so it's, it's a combination. Yeah, it's like Howard yeah, I Cosell. Guess, you know. I think you can see this. I've done very well over the last number of months in terms of getting the unfavorables much better. If you look at New Hampshire, I'm doing great with respect to favorable, unfavorable, very positive. Uh, Iowa, the places that I'm going to a lot, South Carolina, I'm doing great in that category. So I think when people see me, when they see I want to make America great again, they all of a sudden say, you know, we really like them. I'm actually so a nice you're person. Grow I try on very everybody. hard to be a nice person. You're going to grow on it. Donald Trump is here and he is threatening to boycott the next Republican presidential debate. Why? Well, right now, Donald Trump goes on the record from the Trump Tower. Nice to talk to you, Donald. Hello, Greta. 
Um, I understand that you don't like the rules that CNBC has set for its next GOP debate. Um, are you seriously thinking that you would boycott it? Well, the same thing is happening as happened with CNN. They sold the commercial so much and for so much money. It was going to be $4,000 for a 30-second commercial. It ended up being $200,000 and $250,000 $250, for a 30-second commercial. And same thing's happening now with CNBC. And what they're trying to do, they've sold out all their commercials, and they want to increase it by an hour. Now, if you look at the you know, debate, even though it was pretty boring, from last night or the other night with Hillary and the group, that debate, it, it was a two-hour deal. Now they want to make this an extra hour. And I think it's unfair to the viewers because it's too much. It's too much to watch. And they're doing it because they want to make more money. Would you be willing to use the debt limit and risk the possibility of the country going into default to get more spending cuts? Okay. I would use the debt limit. I don't want to say I want to be unpredictable because, you know, we need unpredictability. Everything is so predictable with our country. But I would be very, very strong on the debt limit. And I would be asking for a very big pound of flesh. Would you be willing to shut down the government in order to defund Planned Parenthood or to push some other key policy goal? I do not want to say that because I want to show unpredictability. You have to. You can't just go around and say that. But Planned Parenthood should absolutely be defunded. I mean, if you look at what's going on with that, it's terrible. And many other things should be defunded and many things should be cut. But there are two concerns. The Conservative Tax Foundation. Conservative Tax Foundation says that over 10 years you would create, you would add $10 trillion to the deficit. And there's also the question of who would benefit under your tax plan. The Tax Foundation says the middle class would see after tax income increase 7.2%. The top 1% would see a spike of 21.6%. So between that and ending the estate tax, the Trump family and folks like you would make out great. The estate tax has been a disaster. First of all, it's double taxation. Some people could even say it's triple taxation. But how about the idea that you're going to blow a hole in the deficit and that the top 1% is going to make out a lot better? Well, they're than going the to make class. out better if the economy gets better. Would you cut departments? Would no, you... I'm not cutting services, but I'm cutting spending. But I may cut Department of Education. So Department of Education is one. Environmental protection? What they do is a disgrace. Every week they come out with new regulations. They make it Who's impossible. Who's going to protect the environment? They will be fine with the environment. We can leave a little bit, but you can't destroy businesses. The Wall Street Journal says that you are running as, quote, the most anti-trade candidate since Herbert Hoover. Okay, so here's the story. First of all, the Wall Street Journal was bought for $5 billion. It's now worth $500 million, okay? They don't have to tell me what to do. The Wall Street Journal has been wrong so many different times about so many different things. Something you said on Friday has stirred up some controversy about George W. Bush and the Twin Towers. When you talk about George Bush, I mean, say what you want. The World Trade Center came down during his time. Uh, if you look Hold at on, Sandy that, Hook, you can't blame George Bush for that. He was president, okay? What would you have done? Well, I would have been much different, I must tell you. Somebody said, well, it wouldn't have been any different. Well, it would have been. I am extremely, extremely tough on illegal immigration. I'm extremely tough on people coming into this country. I believe that if I were running things, I doubt those families would have, I doubt that those people would have been in the country. So there is a good chance that those people would not have been in our country. Breaking tonight, new questions for Donald Trump after the Republican frontrunner yesterday suggested that he would strongly consider shutting down certain mosques in the U.S. to prevent the spread of homegrown terror. First of all, I need some clarity on a few issues. Let's start with the Muslim registry controversy. What do you want there? What's your vision? Well, it's very simple. When they come in from Syria, guest of President Obama, we shouldn't be taking any because we have no idea where they come from, who they are. They have no paperwork. There's no way of proving that their paperwork is correct. When they come in from Syria, I want them to be registered. They have to be registered. We have to watch them because we just don't know who they are. We don't know where they come from. We don't know if they're ISIS, and we don't know if they have evil intentions. So I want them registered. No, what I want is I don't want them to come here. We shouldn't right, be taking okay. so anybody. No. We should do, okay. well, uh, you shouldn't do it because we have no idea. ICE, do you believe in ICE? But I'm working through NATO. You haven't mentioned NATO. Why not? 
I think NATO would be fine. I think it's great. I think it certainly makes it a little bit easier. You declare war, you go through NATO, but I would add a lot of countries, frankly, to the NATO group that yeah, we already have. If you can persuade have. Saudi so Arabia to pick up the tab here and there, that would be a good thing. And you, you think you could do well, that? it would be nice. I mean, they do have, they do have plenty of money, right. okay? It would be nice if they contributed. And by the way, so should many other countries contribute. But that way, they're in their country. They, I, you know, I read a case where some people are sent to Minnesota. It was 10 degrees below zero. They go from Syria to Minnesota. Not exactly so great. You tweeted out that um, whites killed by blacks, these were statistics you picked up from somewhere, at a rate of 81%. And that's totally wrong. Um, whites killed by blacks is 15 percent. Yet you tweeted it was 81 percent. Now, Bill, I didn't tweet. I retweeted somebody that was supposedly yeah, an expert. Yeah, but you don't want to be. And it was also a radio show. Why do you want to be in that well, zone? Well, hey, Bill. Bill. Am I going to check every statistic? I've got millions and millions of people. You got it. You're a presidential Trump, contender. You I have millions check of people. You know what? Fine. But this came out of radio shows and everything else. Oh, come on. All radio shows? A retreat. I didn't say Excuse me. All it was is a retweet. It wasn't from me, and it did. It come out, came out of a radio show right. and other be places because you see all the names. Look, you know I'm looking out for you, right? You know that? Yeah, I'm looking out for you. I look out for every honest politician. I don't care what party they're in. Don't do this. Don't put your name on stuff like this because it makes the other side, it gives them stuff to tell the ill-informed voter that you're a racist. This didn't happen in New Jersey. There were plenty of reports, and you're it feeding a stereotype. Jack, it did happen in New Jersey. I have hundreds of people that agree with me. If I said, well, people have said Mr. Trump's not worth uh, Ten billion dollars, and people were saying you would say that was crazy. You yeah, wouldn't make a, a business deal that's a very, based that's on like, retweets and based on much hearsay. Much, much you're, you're running this for president of Jeff. the United this, States. Your words matter. This Truthfulness is matters. Fact-based stuff Chuck, matters. Chuck, no? Make it easy, Chuck. Just play cool. You know, Sean, I've cut my friend a lot of slack over the last several months, Donald Trump, because he is my friend. When he said the awful stuff about Mexicans being drug dealers and rapists, they rationalized that, well, I know he's not a racist. I know the man. When he said those really objectionable things about John McCain and our own Megyn Kelly and Carly Fiorina, I rationalized that they're strong people. They can take him on on their own. They don't need me. When he said that... That stuff about the Muslims in Jersey City, I said, well, maybe it was just confusing Jersey City with Jerusalem or Karachi, where there were Muslims who celebrated the downfall of the towers. But if I stand for anything in this life, it's for the right of disabled people not to be mocked or marginalized. And when he did that thing about the New York Times reporter knowing that he was disabled, making fun of him, to me, Sean, that was a bridge too far. What's it like managing Donald Trump? That's a tough question. Nobody manages Mr. Trump. I think I equate this to uh, being a jockey on the greatest racehorse you've ever seen, maybe American Pharaoh. Corey Lewandowski runs the Trump campaign, and the jockey analogy works because Corey says while he may guide his candidate occasionally, his main job is to hang on and let Trump run. Oh, that is amazing. When he gets up on the stage or when he does an interview, do you know what's going to happen beforehand? I don't think anybody knows. I mean, that's, that's what the American people love. Make way for Mama Grizzly. We're seeing new signs that Sarah Palin may indeed be the surprise guest set to join Donald Trump on stage today in Iowa. The former GOP vice presidential candidate and Tea Party favorite could be a huge endorsement for Trump, who's trying to hold on to his lead over the Tea Party back to Ted Cruz. Already today, Trump picked up an endorsement from the actor John Wayne's daughter. But reporters at the announcement seems really more interested in Sarah Palin. Trump refused to give any clues. We'll talk about it later, I think. We'll talk about that later. But uh, it's a very big uh, event planned, and I think everyone's going to be very impressed. And nobody knows who it is. Well, first of all, can you imagine having that as president? I mean, I'm just watching, and to see that as president, it just doesn't work. And we've been going through it for years with her. Nothing but trouble. And, you know, just to bring out one thing, uh, Bernie gave her a very, very nice pass on the emails, which he shouldn't have done. He destroyed his campaign when he did that. 
and then she went after him viciously on this last situation that happened yesterday. So, you know, that's just more of the same from her. Uh, the the fact is that I do, I'm able, you know, I went to Ivy League schools, I'm a good student, all of that stuff. But you want to take complex subjects and make them a little bit easier. And many times complex subjects, look at the job she did. I mean, she made everything complex and the world fell apart because of her. Hmm. By the way, hundreds of thousands of people killed because of her incompetence. I mean, it's gross incompetence. And she, was, she has done such a bad job in every way. And I am honored to be mentioned. You know, she likes to say, oh, I want to run against Trump. That's because she doesn't run against Trump. You know, if, if you know the art of the deal, when you want something, you say the opposite to the reporters, as an example in this case. So a couple of them said, oh, no, well, I know she does because she told me she does. They're like little babies. Uh, the fact is that, you know, I'm the only one they mention, and I'm the one that she doesn't want to run. But she yeah, didn't she mention you. I mean, she blamed you for ISIS recruiting. I mean, that's a very uh, heavy thing to which, say. ISIS is, a, is right. a monstrous group. My little girl went off to college. I was proud as a dad could be. She working at night, doing everything right. At just a state university. She had her dreams, but she got rained. It was a trip that was badly banned. Try to make a stand. I won 40 grand and getting ripped for 10%. Then I went and heard Bernie speak. And he said, maybe, just maybe. Lower the interest rates to maybe where the banks' interest rates were when they got bailed out. And he said, Maybe, just maybe, with these billionaires, enough is enough. And I was feeling the burn. I was feeling the burn. Maybe, just maybe, enough already. Baby, I'm feeling. Across this country, filling up the prison cells. Some of those kids, they haven't done shit, but they're living in a living hell. Bernie says time, say the real crime is how it's heavy on the black and brown. Man, he sounds like a country preacher, try to tear that building down. Have a feeling to burn. I'm feeling the burn Maybe just maybe Enough already Baby, I'm feeling the burn Yeah, talk about the family values Man, I got a family too And I worry my wife If ain't gonna have time After the baby comes due But Bernie believe in the families Man, I heard it in an interview He said it's a Big day for the family, also for the baby too. I've been feeling the burn. I've been feeling the burn. Maybe just maybe enough already. Baby, I'm feeling the burn. You can call it class warfare. Well, that sounds good to me. There's a one-tenth of the one percent man to hit on a hell of a spree. We had the class to nicely ask, try walking in the people's shoes. They said no, we said it's time to go and make an offer that they can't refuse. I've been feeling the burn. I've been feeling the burn. Yeah. Maybe, just maybe, and I'm already. Baby, I'm a genius. Chump in a suit, say, had a tune, said you'll never raise a minimum wage. Then the corporate dove said, no, 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 you ain't turning that page. Bernie knows about a million folks, he gonna sit them on a Washington Mall. He gonna say, me. Maybe, maybe, 
enough already Baby, I've been feeling the burn